Santa Claus punching the Easter bunny in the neck. Could this be putting people out of work, right? Putting designers out of work, right? The scary conversation of AI taking over inevitably comes up when something as powerful as this tool is, is open to the public. What's up, everybody? This is the Chris and Glenn Info, or CGI podcast. I'm your host, Chris. Hi, everyone. My name is Glenn, and I'm also your host. We are two friends who enjoy having interesting conversations about interesting topics. And today, we are going to talk about something that is pretty fun, uh, which is uh, using text-to-image generation AI. And we're going to play around with it. And specifically, we're going to experiment with a system called Dolly 2. If you haven't heard of it, uh, Dolly 2 has been pretty popular lately. It's been all over the web. A lot of content creators online have been playing around with it. But basically, what you can do is you can feed the AI with arbitrary descriptions, uh, arbitrary uh, text-based uh, 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 information, and then from that, they can generate photorealistic images. And some of the results that these people have been getting have been pretty interesting and pretty crazy so far. And so what we would like to do is uh, spend a little bit of time to go through some of the technical details. So uh, kind of peel back the layers a little bit to understand how it works at a high level. And then we'll test it out ourselves and see what kind of results we can, we can produce. All righty. So again, uh, so here, this is the Dolly2 website. So really quickly, taking a step back, uh, Dolly2 is uh, developed by a company called OpenAI. And in the uh, AI world, uh, they're basically uh, at the state of the art. So this company is a, is a nonprofit based in San Francisco. And um, they're at the cutting edge uh, uh, in developing basically uh, all the AI systems right now. I won't go into too many details, but uh, they've also created one of the most powerful uh, uh, engines, game playing engines, uh, using reinforcement learning, doing things like uh, uh, creating a uh, reinforcement learning agent that can uh, uh, play Dota, Dota 2, a you know, really popular internet game. And uh, they've shown some really, really amazing results. And here is one of their products, um, uh, you know, dealing less with the gaming side of things, but uh, dealing with, you know, image generation and uh, that sort of uh, domain. And I did a small stint in uh, image-based AI during my PhD. So this topic is kind of near and dear to my heart. But here, if we go through the uh, Dolly2 website, again, you can see that it's an AI system that can create realistic images from description in natural language. Uh, and so here are just kind of some of the really cool uh, details and some of the really cool results that they're able to produce. Um, so, you know, it can also take inspiration in uh, uh, certain styles, so certain artistic styles. And uh, here, uh, so this... The version that we're playing with is actually uh, the second generation, Dolly 2. So uh, a year ago, they released Dolly 1. And since then, it seems like they've made a lot of improvements. So their research paper is uh, open source. So OpenAI, you know, so they're a research organization. So most of the, the code that they develop, they share at conferences. And all of this information is up online uh, for free and uh, for open access. So again, just as a kind of like a high level overview of this technology. Uh, so the paper that introduces this technology is titled Hierarchical Text Conditional Image Generation with Clip Latins. As uh, you know, you probably don't, don't know what a lot of that means, but basically uh, the key takeaway here is that they use this method which they call a uh, clip and to basically map uh, the images to uh, a text caption, text 
caption. And what they do, they do this in a two-step process. So the way that I understand this is uh, they basically uh, pr produce an embedding, an image embedding uh, through text caption using something called an encoder. So uh, uh, from an encoder, they uh, take the text and uh, and basically encode that into a high, uh, a, a uh, you know lower dimensional representation of the image, and then they use a decoder to generate an a, an image based on that embedding. So you know, in a nutshell, that's that's really how it works. Kind of a two step process. But one key thing is that you know this method can produce multiple images corresponding to a given image embedding, which is which is quite powerful and which I hope we get to see in a little bit. But in this paper here, they show a couple of examples. So, you know, for example, if you type into Dolly 2, you know, vibrant portrait painting of Salvador Dolly with the robotic half face, uh, this is the image that it produces. It looks, looks quite close. A Shiba Inu wearing a beret and a black turtleneck neck. And again, uh, the result here is is really quite powerful and, and impressive. So if you're still kind of confused about how this works, um, one re uh, resource that I found was actually the first author's website. So uh, the first author, Aditya uh, Ramesh, uh, he actually has a website explaining how Dolly 2 uh, works. And so here, um, we'll uh, kind of go through the details a little bit. But, you know, the underlying system, Dolly 2, uh, which they call Unclip, is based on two key technologies. It's Clip and Diffusion. So Clip is basically a model that learns visual concepts from natural language supervision. And then the Diffusion is a, is a technique used to uh, uh, generate uh, or to train a generative model by, uh, lear by learning to undo the steps of something called a fixed corruption process. And so, you know, here in the next section, they go through it in a little bit more detail, but this, um, so basically one well, key thing to, to, to note is that it seems like it's a two, two, there's two technologies here, which the, in total they call unclip, but there's this clip technology and this diffusion technology. But okay, so yeah, so here to basically access Dolly, it's, it's, super, it's super simple, super easy. Uh, you link it to a Google account. Uh, I'm gonna probably have to blur that out. But uh, after you link it to a Google account, you can uh, uh, it'll give you a certain amount of credits. And let's take a look. Uh, so ah, so if you pay fifteen dollars, you can receive one hundred and fifteen credits. Uh, okay. Oh, there's no discount from buying more. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Not that I can see here. Yep. Uh, Ten. Yeah, fifteen was still one hundred fifteen. <laughs> I mean, all in all, like I think it's pretty undisputed that the results here are incredibly impressive. Um, I think the applications are, uh, are 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 pretty pretty powerful, pretty limitless. Just being able to convert text uh to to images i think that opens the door to a lot of uh, you know interesting questions right can we um uh you know like use use this for concept art right for games for movies right uh you know could this be putting people out of work right putting designers out of work right uh so again a, a lot of here's you know uh, a lot of uh, the scary conversation of AI taking over, uh, and, you know, inevitably comes up when something as powerful as this tool uh, is is open to the public. But uh, I think I think you know it's it's a very very powerful opportunity to you know kind of explore, create, uh, allow us to reach new creative heights. I think that's kind of one really cool aspect to it, and um, yeah, I'm I'm really really excited to see where where this kind of thing may may go. But okay, uh, Glenn, any, would you like me to uh, try anything? <laughs> yeah, say, why don't we think about like, you know, what if we have a another logo um, or a thumbnail for this video? So mm -hmm. maybe two guys 
um, chatting on a podcast and uh, talking about AI. And talking about artificial, artificial intelligence. Let's just, I'm just curious, like, you know, the, the, it's very open-ended here. So, it, I mean, there's, we didn't really provide any, like, visual adjectives. So we'll, we'll see what, what happens. Right, exactly. So very nice. So, okay, so I guess before we talk about the result, first thing I noticed was, like, I really like how in the loading screen, it gives you suggestions. <laughs> So, oh, really? I, yeah, it would give you like suggestions on things that you could type. So I thought that was kind of cool. Um, so, I mean, I mean, I'm really impressed with this one. This is really cool. Like this captured the art, the uh, talking about artificial intelligence aspect really well. I, I guess the first thing I'm really impressed by was the speed, right? Like all in all, yeah. we, we waited uh, like less than uh, less than a minute, right? That was about 30 seconds. Um, I'm actually gonna go ahead and download all these. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna download the all these. Interesting thing is they're not using photos of real people. So if you look at the um, the the two on the edges here, the first one and the last one, mm -hmm. they they they're not like complete faces of people, and there's a little bit of distortion there. Um, right. And right. if you even look at their hands, their fingers, like things don't look. Uh, correct there i think those are just some of the, the 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 problems and even on the microphone like that microphone doesn't look normal like it, it looks like it combined several different types of microphones that looks like um, candles so kind of definitely has like limitations and like it looked yeah it looks like some upside down candle or something <laughs> yeah right um but it's got like like overall the feeling you get from a glimpse like like if you were to like have very blurry vision, like it would look like it was a real photo, right? It's even got the fact that fingertips are red um, because like maybe that's where like blood is more visible. Mm -hmm. um, but then also the guy on the right, his face is kind of chopped off. Um, right. On the left too, you see, you see some issues here again with the hands, the fingers, and also the faces are kind of blurry and the guy's hair is like kind of like melted into the headphones. Mm -hmm. The guy on the left is a little bit better, but his face got like distorted also. Um, but still, it's pretty cool. Even got the fact that like there's reflections um, pretty accurately, like the lighting. Um, I mean, that's honestly quite, it's very impressive um, how it can do that. But I find it, find it interesting, even though this was like a photorealistic one, the second mm -hmm. and third images were cartoon and they also have the same like problems with the face distortions. I think if, um, that's definitely a limitation of probably the technology, like, mm -hmm, especially mm -hmm. when it comes to people's faces. I think there's just too many details and like what we're used to seeing when a face mm -hmm. um, is, it's, it's, it's more complex than I think it is to generate it. Um, hey. So I think the amount of like fine tuning you need to do, especially when you introduce like, I think with the diffusion technique you mentioned, when you introduce noise to something and then it's trying to correct for noise, I feel like that makes it, like harder because on the one hand you want diffusion so that you get like like every time you search this you don't want the same image again right because then that kind of defeats the purpose of like, making like like brand new like creations like or, like uh, originals but at the same time you need that noise uh, i'm sorry so on the one hand you need the noise to do that but on the other hand you don't want it to make it where you can't construct like the, the fine details of a feature. So I think when it gets to like smaller parts of like the face and the fingers where it uses less space to try to get the object then it has difficulty there. That, that's my guess. Yeah, you can also see they got the number of fingers here wrong. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, well that yeah. is correct. <laughs> yeah, and so- Here's another idea. Like for the Pokemon fans out there, what if we <laughs> do like, if I want to create a new monster, right? Uh -huh. I don't know even where to start. So let's just say, like, we how, how, how about, type, how about, type of uh, Pokemon? Fire and so like a know. fire monster. Fire um, and water uh, Pokemon based on a uh, Brontosaurus. <laughs> Did I spell it right? <laughs> or what's a what's a good animal? that we can use here instead of brontosaurus. Uh, 
Hmm. I was going to say T-Rex, like, but I know for a fact there is a T-Rex Pokemon now. <laughs> and also, to describe an adjective, like, I think, like, do you want it to be, like, a cute, friendly, angry, like, uh, you know, like the name, right? On, based on an angry brontosaurus. Okay, right, let's see what happens. I, and I've, I've heard from others that uh, the more descriptive you can get, the better results you get. Mm -hmm. um, wow. So it even went in and gave a name. Bananas. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it interpreted it as two different Pokemon. Uh, so there's some like squiggly stuff here going on. I'm not sure what that deal is. But uh, the Pamanam, <laughs> and both of them are based on Brontosaurus. Yeah, I actually intended it to be a single type, but uh, this was kind of a cool example. And this is a, a neat feature here. You can save your results for you to download later. Hmm. Okay. So let me see. What are some? Well, what are some? I'm seeing. I'm trying to see if we can stump this. Uh, Rhaenyra's Targaryen and Frodo Baggins throwing the ring into Mount Doom while Sauron wields a lightsaber. <laughs> while Sauron, yeah. Uh, Rokes his lightsaber. With a <laughs> light saber. I mean, these are pretty specific things. Like, yeah, they are. Interesting. The first one looks pretty cool, but I don't even see Frodo Baggins in that one. Um, I in some of them I do see kind of like a throwing action. So here <laughs> this on the bottom. Got the, I mean the blonde, but it's a little bit too yellow for a Targaryen. <laughs> the um, gist, the gist is definitely there. I also wonder if there's a character with it. It doesn't seem like uh well I don't think the, the third one I think looks pretty accurate. You got like a little hobbit and and mm -hmm. a kind of Targaryen, and she's throwing something in there. Um, yeah, that's pretty fun. <laughs> it, 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 really, it really, like, begs the question, like, because, uh, you know, OpenAI is it's, its own company, but, you know, a lot of the data can be scraped off of Google. And, like, Google has, you know, when you do image-based searches, like, the captions, the word embeddings are also there. So in some ways, it, that's kind of like free training data. Um, but yeah, it really, it really kind of begs the question, right? Like it's almost like uh, with all the data that people are collecting, like it just really kind of boggles my mind where, where AI is, is going gonna, is gonna to be over time. Because like us as kind of human society, we're, we're generating more data like on a daily basis. These Google indices are going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And, uh, you know, like there's there's gonna be it's kind of be kind of like a feedback loop um and yeah it's you know really really interesting stuff uh but yeah anyways yeah this is kind of fun <laughs> so what else i guess we've been watching a lot of marvel stuff i don't i wonder how it handles like copyright how, how it handles like copyright stuff like i i think i heard from somewhere that like it doesn't do inappropriate stuff so you know if you if you put in like profanity um, it won't recognize those words. It's like it, it somehow has like a good in their database. They uh, omit like all the profane stuff. But uh, hmm. let's see. Got yeah, any any other uh, examples you want to play with? I want to do more Pokemon. Okay, let's do it. Same instead of saying the word Pokemon, just say like. Um, a creature or beast like a creature or i guess like an angry creature in the snow um let's see 
angry creature in the snow. Uh, cute and angry creature. <laughs> cute and angry creature in the snow. Looking for food. Looking for food. Uh, okay. I was going to say in the style of a cartoon, but I'm curious to see if it does, if it tries to do anything like realistic. Yeah, because so far what I'm seeing is that it does. Oh, interesting. Oh. So it, it didn't take the fact that we wanted a cartoon at all because we wouldn't really specify it. So I think the Pokemon actually did help it because it knows the style. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> this just looks like National Geographic. <laughs> yeah. And the creature, it, it interestingly, chose like some raccoonish fox or beaver. Mm -hmm. Right? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, these are, these are two raccoons. I guess... It it's interestingly it didn't it didn't take in I think it may have taken into account animals that would be in the snow like so like furry animals it didn't do anything like a, like a fish you know <laughs> <laughs> or hmm. now I'm curious for any one of these searches if you redo it I'm curious how much variance you get. Right, sure. Let's give it a shot. And it's pretty cool. It saves your history in the top right, and then the tab, yeah. and the uh, little like tab. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look, uh, it's okay. completely different starting point. A little chipmunk in the second one, <laughs> like yeah. a porcupine-ish, um, like a wombat. <laughs> that is pretty cute. I think the second one is actually pretty cute. I actually like the second one and the fourth one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it really took the cute into account. It didn't uh, show food. Uh, I guess it, so. It kind of showed them like stalking, maybe. But mm -hmm. yeah, it, it 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 just at first glance, it they kind of really failed to consider the food aspect. But you know, again, it is, this is this is pretty pretty impressive. Let's see what are some other cool examples we can use. I've heard I've heard of some people doing things like uh at like putting in some like like abstract stuff like what is the meaning of life or the meaning of life or like the cause of human death or something like that yeah that's a good one i don't put any nouns in it the meaning of life ah okay So beach, stacking rocks, staring at clouds from a really high altitude, going hiking. Like the second one's not even physically possible, right? Like how could you be so high um, that you're above the clouds? Like there's no, like only Mount Everest could probably get to that point, right? So yeah, like you get like like a Somerset. A summer setting above the clouds. <laughs> that's, just, that's just pretty incredible. Actually, actually, I have gone like a long time ago. I have gone on some hikes where you where you can see above the clouds. It's oh it's, really? Yeah, yeah. You you can reach certain elevations that is that is above the clouds. It's 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 crazy. It's a uh, oh okay. Yeah. Uh, let me try this. How do we die? A fortune telling Shiba you know reading your fate in a giant hamburger. That's like that's a freebie. <laughs> mm -hmm. How do we die? Ew, insects. Well, what? There's, a of, <laughs> there's like a Taj Mahal, like a secret agent at the Taj Mahal. Looks like a UFO attack. Looks like aliens. I think another curious thing is if you if you were to just search in Google images the same phrase, I'm curious what comes up. Like, do we see anything similar to that? 
I would take a gander and say that it's, it'll it'll query the websites. It'll query the the websites uh, that have the, the text, and then grab the images from those websites. So it's got the skeleton there. Yeah. Skeleton. I think one of them had like a, a test tube and some like insect like thing. Mm -hmm. We don't see the guy at the Taj Mahal yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it, there's a good amount of randomness. Yeah. So I'm wondering. Hmm. Uh, wait, wait, I'm curious that the the, the 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 text bubble or the speech bubble in the skeleton is it? It's not exactly an anagram of those letters because it doesn't have an H, mm -hmm. but it's almost an anagram. Mm. It also adds an A that doesn't exist in mm -hmm. some else, but kind of interesting. Okay, sorry. Okay, no worries. Let's see. What else? Kind of flexing my, the creative juices here. Uh, economics. Just the one word, economics. <laughs> try it. Economics. See some bank, some loans, and some money. Yeah. A credit card. Mm, interesting. How much of gibberish? It's <laughs> good. Seeing the letters, like it, it, it does some type of like um, word letter swap, like a little randomness, because like, like it, it's done a couple of times, like how we die, right? And then the, mm -hmm. and then also with the the name of the Pokemon. Interestingly, um, so I feel like maybe even the letters are tokens, not even just words themselves, like because they can tokenize the letters too. Right. Yeah. So uh, I'm just gonna do like some uh, mental mental dump. So Steve Jobs eating a steak with Iron Iron Man. Uh, while, why? Okay, let's try that. I think that's pretty. That's pretty wacky enough already. Oh, and maybe it's. It looks like it's requesting me not follow our content policy. Does that use a credit though? I don't. I don't think so. Ah, okay. Do not attempt to create, upload, or share images that are not G rated, or that would cause harm. Illegal activity. Political politicians, huh? Don't mislead your audience about. Okay, I well, again, I really respect them for, um, for for really going the extra mile to uh, make things. Uh, I'm curious which part of this is is bad. Yeah, me too. How about Thor? Thor eating. Hey. I'm curious, did that use a credit or not? Hopefully it didn't. No, I, don't, I mean, even if it did, I think it's fine. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, or sorry, two, four, six, eight. So I should have two. Okay. Yeah, these credit, credits are precious, man. <laughs> Do some like credit hustling. <laughs> Credits need more credits. <laughs> oh, okay. So they didn't like the Steve Jobs. Oh, huh, that's weird. Interesting. So Thor eating a steak with Iron Man. And it gave me a cross holding. between Thor and Iron Man. That was kind of interesting. Why is Iron Man holding the hammer? <laughs> I, I find the different art styles kind of like just kind of really, really interesting. Just look at it. And this little Play-Doh people. And this doesn't look like really Thor. It looks like Batman. That looks like an iron, a man made out of iron. Mm. And the one on right, I feel like they kind of combined. Like some of them are like mix of Iron Man and Thor into one hero. <laughs> but then Thor is by himself too. So the Iron Man part is like a little bit mixed. I think the Thor somewhat acted as a adjective as well. Mm -hmm. 
Or how about like I'm just gonna think of something random. Steph Curry playing to get ball with Michael Jordan with a bowling ball. Or how about playing with Michael Jordan with a bowling ball instead of or how about Steph Curry? Going bowling with Michael Jordan. You know what? It's a good way to throw this throw this off. Um, homonyms. Because when you said <laughs> Steph Curry, uh-huh. oh, okay. So it it even though you don't like make it a proper noun by capitalizing the letters, it gets the concept right that it's not literal curry. Um, mm. You know, mm-hmm. I don't really yeah. see bowling in here, though. It's interesting. True. And it, um, and I think it, it it's not because I think the faces aren't they can't use real people's faces. I think that's maybe one of the limitations too. Right, right, right. Yeah, interesting. It 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 knew that you know Steph Curry and it, it associated with basketball when I didn't even when I didn't even enter in basketball. So again, I think I think really the secret is really knowing how how big the the database is, and I don't think I ever brought it up. I don't think I really got a chance to look at it in the paper. But and then all right, so here we go. I, I, I googled um, homonyms. So homonyms are words that have the same spelling but different meanings, mm-hmm. and I search for words with the most definitions. So. Run has 645 definitions, mm. set, go, take, stand, get, turn, put. I mean, these are mostly verbs, um, but we should try to use as many of these as possible. So like run, run, set, go. Hmm. So Leonardo DiCaprio running for president while setting up camp. Even to a human, that that makes no sense. (laughs) But I just want to do kind of a word dump and see what happens. Wow, look at this. I'm actually quite impressed with this result. So you have kind of a handsome looking actor wearing some iconic Leo, uh, iconic Leo hair, some iconic Leo clothing. It looks like he's campaigning. (laughs) It looks like he's campaigning and there's a camping aspect to it. I'm I'm actually quite impressed with this result. But, I think yeah. proper nouns, it, it struggles with, right? I don't know. Like, I'm curious how, how much better. I feel like it might function better with um, more generic things like a man, right? Because then it can be more random. But I guess, I guess it gets like, like the second one is, the second and fourth one, I think, are the best, right? Mm-hmm. In terms of the face. Right. Um, but every time I feel like you use proper nouns, like look look at the lettering, it, it gets it gets all like jumbled up again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it doesn't do it doesn't do signs and lettering very well. And I feel like it, it's it's just random, right? Like there's no intent to make it a, an actual word. Like the letters literally are random. Like I think it's just coincidence to me that there's a love in the background for one of them, because <laughs> mm. all the other ones don't make any sense, right? Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Let's see. What else? What else can we? What else can we do? We can say Santa Claus uh, punching the Easter bunny in the neck. In the yeah. neck while eating cup ramen. (laughs) 
like oh so this is a part it didn't get the fact that cup ramen is like a proper noun too mm-hmm. kind of right um, yeah it literally cut like a ramen and put it in a cup <laughs> that's kind of cool that's kind of cool like in this case right here it, yeah it's ramen in a cup here you have a cup and a, and a bowl of ramen and a cup and a bowl of ramen and i think it, it somehow it registered punch as like a uh, aggressive Everyone's punch yeah <laughs> It, it kind of registered as like an aggressive. It, it, again, it just kind of boggles my mind how how it can it can capture this right. Like just like I think I think forget about the fidelity for now. I think you know, I think like the the uh, 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 holy grail here would be if this was like photorealistic, right? If this was like like a super realistic artist rendering. But I think the most impressive part to me is is the like how well it got the gist right like like how can you know you you enter these words and like within within 15 seconds within 15 30 seconds it just kind of boggles my mind that it can capture like the like the the people in the image because the image is so complex right there's so much that goes into a into an image there's the objects there's like what they're doing like the the interactions with the, with the environment and like somehow it has it has captured all of this, and which is which is insane to me. And when you think about like how many words are in the in human dictionary, like you know, um, is there like it's 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 this is insane to me, right? Actually, like, Matt, Matt, you just brought up a, an interesting thought. Let's stress test the length. Like, what is the limit for the number of words or characters you can put in there? Like, if you can like copy and paste an entire like story or something. I want to see like where where does it cut you off because like let's see how descriptive we want to be. Right, right. <laughs> like, right let's say like Little Red Riding Hood or something like that. Um, uh, <laughs> um, story, I guess, or or I guess the Wikipedia page, maybe yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Let's stress test this. Actually, that whole paragraph. Yeah, it's right here, right? Uh, yeah, I guess. It, I guess it, it also it also begs the question, like, how much can be represented in, in an image in the first place? You know, like I think it also. I think here this is this is a use case where, uh, like, text to video probably makes more sense. And mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, anyway, it, it, it's definitely a good example to try it out. But. Um, yeah, I just, I just do this. How about up at the in the top? There's like um like a definition part. Right here. Um. Yeah. Yeah. It's a fairy tale about a young girl and a sly wolf. Um. Like maybe the whole thing, like both both like sections. Oh, okay. Nice. Yeah, I'm quite curious. Oh wow! It actually took the whole thing. There's like. Didn't cut it off. <laughs> it, it keeps going. Yeah, that's impressive. That is, I'm curious, like, where is the limit? <laughs> you got to find something big. Let's see. Wow. Wow. So basically, it got it got Little Red Riding Hood. European fairy tale about a young girl and a sly wolf. Its origins can be traced back to pre seventeenth century European folk tales. Yeah, crazy. I, I How about like Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs? Mm-hmm. Like you want the the, no, the Wikipedia? Yeah, yeah, the Wikipedia. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah book oh it's not that long yeah it's it's a lot of like year details and stuff oh description what this guy right here queen (laughs) (laughs) oh Oh, oh, did it cut it off okay so there is a character limit ah okay okay once in the woods, Snowy White pleads with him not to hurt her, assuring him that she'll 
Yeah, showing him, yeah, so it basically it ended like right here. Okay. Interesting. Okay, okay. But you know what? Let's let's do that anyway, see what happens. <laughs> I mean, so far, you know, you had brought up the point of implication. Um, I have, I don't see any of these being used for anything professional that I might need. <laughs> right. But other than entertainment, do I see a, a real life practical use for something like this? Hmm. I mean, one practical use of art is the emotions that the piece evokes, right? Mm -hmm. so if I'm looking at something and I wanted to admire it and I wanted to decorate um, my room, like I could definitely use this to decorate my room because uh, I think it accomplishes that as just like things to admire. Mm -hmm. But if I wanted something specific where I think when it comes to like letters, I know it, that's a limitation. I can't use it to generate um, sensible language. Um, I can't, I, we can't even use it to let's say like make a banner for our CGI podcast. Like I think it will, it will jumble the letters for sure given like our examples there. So we can't ask it to make us like, you know, unique art mm -hmm. um, for for business logos, I guess. Um, but I guess you can always add that afterwards. You, 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 choose, <laughs> you choose like what you want for the background and then just um, stitch in that part. I, I think I, I read that there is some way, I think one of the features in Dolly 2 is that you can, you can like fix certain areas of an image. Although I don't know I, if I see that function here. Yeah, I read that. I read that as well. I think it's when you go into this upload, like I was staring at this for a while. I didn't I had, I had no idea what this does. But yeah, apparently you can upload images. And um, here, I'm just, I can just, I'm just gonna do a quick test of this two guys chatting on a, on a podcast thing. Uh, okay, so crop, edit image. Ah, okay. So what can we do here? Image editing is now in beta. Erase part of the image to edit or add a generation frame. Generation, okay. Oh, erase. Oh, oh, I see, I see, I see. So if I, okay, so let me undo. I see. So let's fix the parts that aren't right. Like I guess his fingers, his his face, like the candle. <laughs> right. edit. Let's say we, we really needed this this photo. Add and, uh, a microphone. I'm just, I don't even know. Describe the entire desired image. Oh, what, what, not just the erased area. Oh, so, so yeah, microphone, All right? Generate. Wait, wait. Uh, the entire you gotta like redo like two guys um chatting on a podcast talking about ai right right uh, but i wanted to test out is it just going to modify that spot that i erased i'm i'm not sure also we didn't really play around with uh different art styles so i want to see like what if we add like full oh or oh, you can choose the art style Yeah, they say like oil painting. Let's see. Oops. Hmm. Yeah, interestingly, the editing is taking quite a bit longer. Oh, t a tip ask for 3D renders. Whoa. Okay. 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 Wow. Look at that. So. A great job, actually. Yeah, it added a microphone here. Yeah, I mean, again, I'm 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 pretty floored, just you know, from a technology standpoint. Like, I'm 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 quite impressed. Um, 
Okay, so sorry, what are we gonna do? Okay, we're gonna do a 3D rendering of Santa Claus punching the Easter bunny in the arm while eating a sandwich. <laughs> oh. Got yeah, it's still quite a bit of distortion, but <laughs> it's it didn't get the uh, or maybe the second one. Yeah. This one, this one's probably the best. Yeah. And then you can fix the 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 eyes there. Maybe that's a good way for them to get you. It's like I'm gonna purposely scramble one part of the image and then you gotta use a second token to fix it. <laughs> Okay, let's try this. A photorealistic image of Santa Claus punching the Easter bunny in the arm while eating a crepe. Let's change change the food. Again, it's just like like the the word like these like text text descriptions have just so much information in it like when you think about it like when we read right when oh, wait, wait, wait. Look, look at the third picture they saw santa claus with the bunny that is <laughs> and i don't know why, why is there a random kid now <laughs> okay. little baby He's a little uh -huh. baby man. Uh, maybe we can wrap up this video. You know, it's kind of a fun little exercise with just some closing thoughts. Sure, sure, sure. I mean, I don't think this will replace artists. I think this will give artists maybe another tool to like uh, consider different, you know, random ideas. Um, mm -hmm. And and maybe they could still do the touch ups, like if they don't have inspiration, like someone that has the skills and um, editing, like Photoshop. Um, I mean, this definitely saves time. Like imagine you're an artist, like you are focused on touching up now instead of, um, you know, generating the whole image from scratch. Cause I think that's, I mean, I don't know what it's like being an artist, but it would seem daunting to me to have to like, you know, create from scratch some idea that I have. But if I, if I were to, get like a blueprint and then just like fix parts of it and then modify parts of it yeah that would make my life a lot easier i could get a lot more done um curious about the copyright part of it like how much of this can you use um because who owns the artwork especially if i'm editing something like that like do i the editor own it or like i mean if it's or is it like Dolly's like you have to like give you permission to edit it before you publish it or something like that? So that's where it gets interesting, you know, or like some of the legal implications. Um, yeah, what, what do you think? Right. No, I mean, I think that's a very valid point. Um, I don't think it will necessarily replace designers. Uh, I think like we 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 were trying to test out some really weird and, and odd and specific use cases but for simple things uh yeah i think it's it's perhaps too random because i think uh to the results are a little too random i think when when people have designs in mind they're looking for something specific and uh, you know there's iteration in that uh but i think it can it can kind of inspire a lot of ideas. I think that's kind of a cool thing here. Uh, but yeah, you're right. I don't think it'll completely replace designers. Um, it may remove a, a small need for designers if you know you can just go on this and make something that satisfies your need, right? Like if and and if I and I have this option available to me uh, right away, right? Like rather than having to you know, explain something to a designer, so you know I think it it's it, in in some ways 
does reduce the need for a, a, a human designer a little bit, but like not, not all the way. Uh, but yeah, but I think, you know, again, what, what really impresses me the most is just the way that it's able to take such uh, complex information that is just representing represented in 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 these uh, text descriptions and being able to you know uh, uh, visualize it by right? being able to kind of take take these take these words these these concepts and just put it put it on on pen and paper and visualize it. I think that's 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 kind of cool. <laughs> Because people have people consume a lot of visual media or a lot of um, text-based media, and uh, this could be uh, leading up to uh, you know a world where like we can we can uh, write write a, a script and have it spit out a um, a complete movie for you. Just it may, uh, I think we're you know you know not quite there, but seeing where we are with the progress, I think that is a, uh, a feasible possibility, right? And I think people are already working, working towards that. Like there are, um, I have seen some videos online of, uh, I don't know if it's OpenAI specifically, but people are already working on uh, text to video generation. And there's some, you know, pretty, pretty cool results already. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, I think, I think, uh, yeah, just kind of a, a very, very cool and interesting application of AI. Really excited to see where this goes. And, uh, yeah, thanks for sticking around.